In this video, I add a grid to a softbox to create some dramatic soft lighting. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that has everything for us photographers. In this video, I'm looking at softboxes with a grid. Now, soft boxes are great. They give lovely soft lighting and they're my first choice in a studio environment. But the grid does something different. It keeps the softness of the soft box, but gives it direction. And when you're working in a studio, sometimes that's exactly what you want. You want to push the light in one direction and that's what the grid allows you to do. Now it does it very simply by stopping the light coming out at the edges. And you can see it, if I angle the softbox away, the more I angle it away from you, the less of the surface of the softbox, the white part you can see, and therefore, of course, you wouldn't see any light when it fires. They really are an incredibly useful tool for any studio. Now, that means you can put the light exactly where you want it and get some very dramatic but still soft lighting, but you're probably thinking, what's the downside? Because there must be one. And there is a couple of downsides. The first thing is these aren't a standard item. You need to purchase, purchase them separately, normally speaking. But secondly as well, you'll find that the amount of light that they produce can be reduced. So you may have to increase your flash power to compensate. Also watch out that if you have a grid on, your light is going to be very directional. It might miss your subject a little bit. And just a small angle of your light can make a dramatic difference to your exposure. So do make sure you keep your flash meter handy and keep checking those exposures. Now to see this in action, we need a subject. So let's go get ourselves a model. So today I'm joined in the studio by Brian. Do you want to say hello, Brian? Hi. He's going to be the model for today, and we're going to start by having a look at why a grid is so good in a studio. So we're here, we've got this massive white wall, this beautiful white cove. I've got the softbox set with the grid in place. Let's take a shot and see how it comes out. Okay, Brian, here we go. So with the grid in place, the light is very directional, but it's still soft. The amount of light that hits the background is relatively small, so we have some darkness in the background, but it's not overly dark. Now, that's great, but how does it compare to a shot without the grid? Well, let's just rip this off, because these things are just held on with Velcro. You can just tear them off. Just like that, and we'll take the same shot again. Okay, Brian, so, as you were, And the end result is completely different. That background has gone a very smooth, neutral gray. It almost looks evenly lit. The difference between the, the lit shot with the grid and the lit shot without is very, very obvious. And hopefully that one shot alone should give you an idea about why grids are so useful in the studio. So I've changed things around ever so slightly. We've got Brian up against the wall here and I've got my softbox up against the wall. Now at the moment, there's no grid on there. Let's just take a shot and see how this comes out. Now I've pre-metered this. I know the exposure is f5.6 at 160th of a second, 100 ISO. So we'll take a shot and I'm gonna go full length this time. So it comes out perfectly well exposed, nothing wrong with that at all, but there's no shape or dynamism to the light. It's pretty just everywhere light, which is what you would expect from a softbox. Right, let's put the grid on and see how that changes the shot. Now, as I said earlier, when you put the grid in place, it does affect your exposure. So it won't be F5.6 anymore. Let's take another meter reading and find out what that is now. So it's gone down to F4, so it's taken away one stop of light. So I could shoot at F4, or because I'm using my Streak Light 360 inside of there, I can simply increase the power here on the remote control. Three clicks is one more stop. We'll, we'll double check just to be on the safe side. Here we go. Sure enough, F5.6, spot on. Okay, let's take the shot. Okay, are you ready, Brian? Here we go. 
So with the grid in place, it's a completely different shot. The light is much more directional. There's a lot more control over where it goes. And yet we still keep the softness in the shadows that we had before. I've got one more idea I want to try with the grid. So let's move the light and set something different up. So what I've done here is I've put the softbox with the grid right in front of Brian's face. Now this will give a very different pattern of light. If there was no grid, the light would just spread everywhere, it will be very smooth, and that could be exactly what you want. But with the grid, you're gonna get a little bit harder drop off at the edges, should give it a little more drama to our shot. Now as always, we need to meter, so let's just pop this underneath Brian's chin, here we go. Okay, so that's telling me F10, could shoot at F10, or I could drop the light down, just a, a stop or so down to f8 which is my my nice aperture so we'll go with f8 iso 100 160th of a second let's take this shot okay so you want to look towards the light f f brian can you just look over towards the the sign over there that's the way here we go so as you can see, we get a beautiful drop off on the edges. The edges are still nice and soft. They're not hard defined line. There is a softness to them, but the softness and light on Brian's face is still there. So the grid is doing its thing. The softbox is doing its thing. So that's some basic principles of using the grid. Now let's put this together and we'll do a little shoot with Brian and see what great shots we get. Okay, Brian, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, well, let's do it. So, uh, I can get you just lean right back up against the wall for me. I'm going to do a bit of a cool dude. Okay. Yeah, so if we go a little bit of that. Are you ready on three? Ready? One, two, three. Wait, can you get your arms a little higher? Where we got you uh, against the, the wall, so if you just lean back against the wall. Brilliant stuff. Okay, so there we go. We got some great shots there. All I need to do now is to get my favorite shot into Photoshop and do a little bit of editing, and we're going to do that right now. Don't forget to check out Adorama's latest contest and your chance to win amazing prizes. So of course that was just the tip of the iceberg of what you can do with a grid. And if you want to learn more about grids, check out the Adorama Learning Center for extra information. For now, I'm just gonna edit one of the pictures. Let's go and have a little look at the shot. So this is the picture I want to edit and I really like this effect. I love the way that the softbox gives a soft light as we can see by this very gentle shadow and yet still gives a very directional light because you can see the background well, it hasn't really received any light at all. And we've got this nice gentle drop off at the front. Really simple technique and very effective. But there are a few things I want to change. I really want to change the clarity. Now normally I like my clarity kind of hard and edgy, but not in this case. I want to go soft and gentle because I think that works with the picture very well indeed. So I'll put the clarity down into the negative area. Next, I'm going to change the settings because when I've done that, I can see it's, it's kind of changed the dynamics of the shot somewhat. So let's bring the whites up so they're a little bit brighter and we'll also open up the shadows just a little bit like so. There we go, that looks a little bit better. We maybe even go a little bit more on the whites. So that's got my picture basically how I want it, but now I'm gonna play around with the colors because all the, although the colors are fine, I can go a little bit more dramatic with the colors by doing a few tricks in Photoshop. So what I wanna do is give this a tone. We've got this lovely gray area here and I can tone it using the temperature or the tint slider. I like this sort of bluish tone. So let's come down into the kind of the bluey areas, not too much, something like that. Now that tints everything, both the background and Brian's face and, and body. And although I don't mind it on the body, I do think the face now looks a little bit cold. So we're gonna make some local adjustments and I'm gonna do it using the adjustment brush. Now with the adjustment brush, I've got a few things I can change here. I'm just gonna reset everything and just increase the temperature. I don't know how much, just a, a little bit and we can always change it in a second. 
I'm also going to do something I don't do too often, and that's turn on auto mask. And I'll show you why in a second. I'm just going to paint over his neck, over the face, over the hair, and that adds in a warmth to the shot. See, that's, that's pretty good. And okay, we do the lips as well, don't forget those. There we are. Now, if I turn on the mask, you can see what's gone on there. It's worked really well around the neck area, but the, the mask has just spilled everywhere around the head area. So let's just turn off the mask, turn off auto mask, choose erase. I'll just tidy those areas up, just erasing away that warm glow that he now has around him, which isn't quite what I was hoping for. It, really what I wanted was a nice neat edge around the neck, and that's what auto mask has done for me. Now I think that colour's a little bit too strong. It's okay because it's good to paint it strong. You can see it working and you can change it to your heart's content afterwards. So I reckon probably around about half of what it was before is where I need to be. I also think I could put a touch more exposure on his face just to, to lighten that up, maybe a third of a stop. And there you go. There's my final picture completed. So there we go, we got a great shot at the end of this shoot. If you've enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos by myself and the other amazing presenters here on Adorama TV, you've got to click on the subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey, thanks for watching. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.